All right, welcome to the third part of the fourth lecture on utilitarian reasoning. And we're going to look in this um, segment at preference-based utilitarianism, the idea that you ought to maximize the aggregate amount of people getting what they really want, what they choose to want. So in preference-based utilitarianism, again, it is, uh, it's consequentialist, so your policy is right or whatever if you, pardon me, if you cause and you have to, what you have to cause is utility, but in this case this is preference satisfaction and you want to cause the maximum amount of this and you, to get that you have to add everything up, you have to add everybody's uh, preferences up. So the picture we have is a person who has a bunch of desires and wants and wishes and whatever, things that they would like to happen, and they can't get everything, so they have to choose, and which is the want that they would most want satisfied, and how much, how badly do they want it satisfied, which would be the intensity of the preference, well in this case it's a D, okay, so this is the, the one, her want for D is her preference, her D is what she prefers to happen. And you have this idea where you start, this person starts out with a bunch of different wants and desires, uh, chooses from these the one that, they, uh, that she wants, which in this case is D, performs an action to get D, resulting in a state of the world, which is the state of the world D, which is what she wants, and then presumably she gets an experience of having this preference satisfied. Okay, so this is the, the picture that we've got going on here. Um, preference is something you prefer amongst all the things that you might want at this point. We're trying to, the idea is that an action is right if it causes the maximum amount of satisfied preferences. Doesn't matter who has them, but you add them all up. If, if some people have bad, um, have preferences that um, uh, aren't satisfied and some people are, it doesn't matter who those people are. What matters is that preferences get satisfied. There's a measurement problem. How do you measure the intensity of a preference? Um, we can say, um, now, there is some solutions to this, so we're going to talk here about two solutions to this measurement problem and um, in, as we go along, one in this uh, segment and one more in the next. There's knowledge problems. How can you have enough knowledge to know how to satisfy people's preferences? Um, well, that's just uh, a general problem. There's a problem that we had before, this um, immoral preferences. Um, sadism. Should you satisfy the sadist preferences? Well, the same concerns apply as last time. It just seems like sadistic preferences should not be counted, but yet preference utilitarianism as a theory doesn't have a resource for saying that some preferences should not be counted. There are also rights-based and justice-based problems, as I talked before. Justice, there could be a grave inequality, a, a situation in which, uh, which the, a minority is oppressed or exploited, could be the one that produces the greatest amount of preference satisfaction, highest GDP, whatever, uh, and in that case, preference satisfaction utilitarian has to say this is the right thing to do, and that seems wrong as well. And finally, there are also rights-based problems too. Um, I'll give, here's an example, it's a common philosopher's example. The, somebody comes into a hospital needing a, a small fix-up of some sort. Um, the, there's a transplant surgeon there who has five people and they're dying. One needs a heart, um, two others each need a, a lung, and two others need, need a kidney. This person arrives in to have the, you know, a bandage put on their toe, and the transplant surgeon said, well, I can satisfy uh, five preferences by carving up this innocent person and giving the innocent person a, um, a giving his kidneys and his lungs and his heart to these five people who will who will have, have their preference to live satisfied. Okay, on the utilitarian view, this seems you know as described. You can probably wiggle out of it, but as described, the the uh, the, the utilitarian view is the transplant surgeon should. Uh, sacrifice the innocent um, uh, hospital visitor to save the five other people. And yet that somehow uh, seems wrong. Even though the utility is maximized, every five people get their right to life satisfied as opposed to one, um, the, uh, the, the, somehow the rights of that hospital visitor have been, uh, have been trampled on. All right, so there are, there are these sorts of issues with util preference-based utilitarianism, and you should always look for this sort of thing whenever you're making a utilitarian argument. You say, well, look, this 
uh, this decision would maximize uh, people getting what they want, but then start to look, be suspicious, and look and see if there are any problems about rights violations or in unfairness. Right, this idea of measuring, which I said was a problem, the utility of preference satisfaction. Well, if we assume that the, uh, pref the utility is proportional to the intensity of the preference, then there seem to be two ways that you can go about measuring um, the, this intensity. One is the von neumann morgenstern method, which was employed originally in game theory, and another is the willingness to pay idea, which is uh, employed in, um, in um, uh, the topic of the next um, segment, which is economic utilitarianism. So I, I won't say any more about willingness to pay as a, as a measure of the intensity of somebody's preference. And I'm just going to describe quickly the von neumann morgenstern method. Um, the way you do this is you assign a utility of zero to the worst possible outcome that a person could face. For example, inoperable cancer, total uh, destitution, and a hundred to the best possible outcome that a person uh, might want. This is the thing that a person might want most, maybe great, wonderful health and a huge amount of wealth. Okay, Then you offer a person a gamble. The gamble is a percentage chance of getting the um, the, hun the utility of a hundred. Okay, what? Uh, and presumably, if you don't get it, you get zero. Okay, so what? Um, uh, and you can offer this person various gambles. You can have a ten percent chance of getting a hundred, or you can have a you know ninety nine percent chance of getting it. Well, amongst those gambles, the person is going to say, well, I'm um, indifferent between that gamble and um, having um, this, um, this um, state of the world's world happen. And at that point, you say this is a number between 0 and 100 that gives you an a measure of how much the person uh, wants something, of uh, how, how strong the person's preference is. So, for example, in, um, in this um, picture here, what you're offered a promotion, uh, you have to, you're asked, uh, what sort of ga what gamble would you take? Would you take a 40% uh, a chance of getting um, everything you could possibly want, um, or, uh, or would you rather have your promotion? Well, you say, mm, I think I'd prefer the, 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 the you know, that 40% isn't enough. I think I'd I want more, so I'd rather have the promotion. Okay, and you go on until you find the point at which uh, the person is indifferent between a gamble, a 60% chance of getting everything they could possibly want, and um, the promotion. And then you say, well, 60 is the uh, intensity of the preference for the promotion. So just roughly how this goes. Okay, so whether that's a good system and whether it can be applied in, in all cases, um, that's a, uh, a difficult question. So just uh, to get you thinking, which of the following best exemplifies the application of this preference satisfaction reasoning. Okay, so pause the video and think for a moment and I'll come, we'll come back and I'll um, tell you what I think. Okay, uh, welcome back. This decision will maximize GDP. Well, this is actually what perhaps an economic utilitarianism, utilitarian might say, where um, preferences, uh, satisfaction is measured, measured by um, ability to pay, and if, uh, sorry, willingness to pay, and if people have more ability to pay, then they be, have more to buy. And so that's, it's possible, but it's, um, it's not directly the answer. If I had known that something was defective, I would not have chosen it, uh, but you did want it. Uh, you, impl implicit here is the fact that you did choose it, so that was your preference. So that, this is an example of an informed preference where that's the, but it's not your actual preference. This decision will cause the most joy and the least hurt. Well, joy and pain are sensations and so it's a possibility, but it is also the best example of sensation-based utilitarian thinking. This decision will cause people to get what they want, most want. Well, what you most want is what you prefer. So this is not as good because it's, a, it's actually talking about sensations as this, which is talking about people getting what they want and what they prefer. All right, so we're finished with 
this brief introduction to preference-based utilitarian thinking. We'll look at, um, in the uh, next segment, at the economic version of preference.